Okay, hello everyone, welcome to another podcast. And I promised a while ago that I would do a parts list of my direct attached uh, storage system that I've built. Uh, so people can uh, build their own if they want or do something similar. Uh, it's a bit late uh, than I intended because I had a failure on my main server that needed fixing. And that took up a bit of time. Uh, the main system disk failed and uh, to sort of faff around getting that back up and going. But anyway, that's all done. So the motivation for this was I was given at work uh, eight, well, quite a bit more than eight, but I'm using eight in, in this uh, project, eight four terabyte SAS drives that I wanted to use as a sort of useful storage playground for a bunch of projects. And obviously that doesn't fit in a normal computer very easily, so I wanted to put them into an external direct attached unit, but I didn't want to spend sort of 300 plus pounds on something like this. So this is a USB 3 external RAID enclosure, and I didn't really want to um, spend that amount of money, uh, but I wanted something that's sort of similar. So I thought, well, I'll just build something myself. So this is a screenshot of the final thing, very just a little bit... Uh, a little bit fuzzy, I didn't take very good stills of it. But you can see what I've done is I've repurposed an old, uh, this is actually a rack mountable or tower uh, mode computer case, and I've used that to store the eight drives in. And the, there's a few bits of technology that allow that to happen. And if you check out the other videos, you can sort of see how it all went together, but I'm just gonna go through the list of parts today. So if you wanna build your own, you can do it. So in the host computer is one of these, and you don't have to buy this exact one, and I have no affiliation with any of these eBay sellers, so by all means, search around to get the best deal. Um, I'm not sure if I paid this much or not, to be honest, but I, I can't remember. Uh, I could look it up. But, um, but you want something like this anyway. So this is an LSI 8 drive external PCIe controller. So this is just a HBA controller, it doesn't have any RAID on it, it just passes, just allows the drives to connect. And it has two external connectors uh, for the SAS drives, so four on each connector basically. Um, so that goes in the host machine, and then from there I've got two cables uh, coming out, one for each of the four banks. So with this, just make sure you get cables with the right ends for how you end up set, setting this up. So in my case, I wanted the same connector on each end, which is a SFF8088 connector. And I bought two, I did actually buy two at um, two meters and I paid that price for them, which I thought was reasonable, but if you don't need them two meters long, so if they're gonna stand next to each other, you might be able to save a bit of money. Um, so that was a pack of two of those, was pretty decent. And then the reason you need to be a bit careful about what connector you have is, is for the next step. So I used this to pass that cable back through into the case that I was using for the, uh, for the hard drives. So this goes in a normal PCIe bracket inside the, uh, that repurposed case. And on the outside, it has the same connector and then the inside, it has an internal SAS connector. So on the outside, it's an SFF8088, and then inside, it's an SFF8087, which is the sort of the normal internal SAS connector. And it just passes the cable through, basically, as you'd expect. So pretty cheap, not much electronically going on there. Uh, it's just a straight pass-through cable. Um, it did come with both um, the sort of low profile and normal profile connector, depending on so if you've got a low profile case that you're doing with this, it would fit. So that's the only bit that you need to be a bit careful of to make sure that you get that internal connector correct and the two ends of your, you know the, what you need for the two ends of the external cable. So because I was using enterprise SAS drives, I had to be a little bit careful about how I connect them up with the machine. So here is the cable I used. So it's a, uh, a four device breakout cable from a SAS connector. And then on the other end, it has the SAS power and data built in, but obviously you can see that the power connector is not connected to that. And it takes a SATA power connector. 
Now that's where you can go a bit wrong with this. So if you just plugged your SATA power directly from your PSU into this adapter, the SATA drives wouldn't work, or they might not work. They would just get stuck in a reset loop. And the reason for that is that uh, they, the SATA power connected from your uh, PSU that you're using will um, put power down a pin that isn't supposed to have power down it, basically. But there is a way around that, and it's pretty simple. So what you do is you buy something like this. This is a Molex to SATA power adapter. So this one's quite handy because it has five on the end. So you could just have for eight drives, two of these, Molex on one end. And then because it's an adapter, it doesn't put the power down that pin that upsets SAS drives. So that's quite handy. You won't get any problems with the drive resetting. And obviously that just they just plug into there. Now the case that I repurposed doesn't have that many internal three and a half inch bays. So I bought two of these. And the nice thing about these is you can also put a fan on them. So I got two of these inside, screwed them in, and then obviously all the drives just fit inside there with a fan in front to keep them cool. So the last piece of the puzzle is a way to turn the power supply in your repurpose case on and off. You could you could do the sort of paperclip hack, but I thought I'd do something a little bit neater than that. So I got this, which is um, designed for testing. So you just plug it into the 24 pin power cable from your PSU and it allows you to switch that PSU on and off, which then powers all your drives up, obviously. The only other thing that I then used was a fan controller. So you could use any old fan controller. So I got three fans, one on each cage and then an exhaust fan. And this just allows you to control the speed. And I found that on the lower setting, uh, it was quite, it was uh, both reasonably quiet, as in I couldn't really tell from this background noise of the office, and also provided decent cooling to the drives. So I'll put a link to this video um, below, but you can see the whole thing in action there. So the external cables coming in there, that's my pass through um, adapter. And then you can see from there, I've got the two banks of four data and power going to the hard drives in the cages and then the power adapters there and a bit of cable spaghetti that I didn't tidy up that well. And actually you can just about see the wire from the, uh, the, uh, the switch that turns the whole thing on and off. I've got a, um, an old uh, Silverstone, I think it's a 600 watt power supply in there, which is probably pretty overkill for this, but it's fine. And then you can see it's just a standard computer case that I repurposed. So that's it really. Um, hopefully that gives you a sense of how I did it. I'll put all the links below and the links to the other video if you want to sort of look at uh, how it all worked in action. And uh, yeah, let me know if you build your own and how you get on. This is an easy way. I, don't, I haven't totaled it up. We could do it quickly. Let's call that 60 quid. That's 40 quid, so 100, 124, 100 and Call it 134 and two of those 30 so 160 something like that and then we'll call it 170 for those and a fiver so you're looking at about 180 quid to build a pretty robust eight drive external obviously if you don't have a case and you don't have a power supply and you have to buy all that you are starting to get a little bit nearer to this kind of price maybe not I don't know what case supply you might still save a hundred pounds. The difference of course with this is it has some kind of built-in RAID and um, it goes over USB or external SATA. So I would wager the performance of mine is potentially better depending on what controller card you buy. Um, it's also just a bit more fun isn't it to build your own but you could still save a reasonably large amount of money. Um, I set this up with BTRFS, but you could do it with ZFS or whatever, and that provided the RAID system for me. And I actually think that that kind of using those software RAID tools is better often than uh, sort of proprietary RAID 
controllers, which are sometimes hard to actually recover in the event of a failure. So there we go. That's the whole system. So let me know below if you uh, if you build one, and I'll see you in the next video.